right. Well, all right. Let's go. Hi, friends. So we're doing a DIY, and um, I'm making a keychain. But basically what I was doing is I dipped a uh, cotton round into alcohol to just, like, prep the acrylic keychain. Um, so while I'm doing this Mod Podge, uh, this is the first step you want to take to adhere glitter. Um, I stuck the Mod Podge in the middle and then spread it out so I could have an even, like, layer of Mod Podge and it's not all clumpy in random areas. But anyway, while I'm doing this Mod Podge, I guess I just want to give, like, a little update. Um, I was thinking that, um, I would do more DIY videos because a lot of the times I just don't want to film because... I want to do DIYs so I'm like oh well you could just film the DIYs and this is actually an order that I'm making um, someone ordered this from my Etsy shop and you guys will see the completed product by the end of the video but um, my first step with my glittered keychains is to put on a thin layer of Mod Podge and I use a sponge for that so now I'm taking some chunky glitter I got a big set of a bunch of colors from Amazon and this is a white like holographic chunky glitter and I'm just <laughs> chunky <laughs> I don't know what that was. So I'm just like pouring that out. And then what I do is I'll tap the excess off. For like my nails were not having it. Like I just could not grab the keychain. Like look at me just like epically failing. There we go. <laughs> so that's my first layer of um, chunky glitter. And what I'm doing now is running my fingers all around the edge of the acrylic to get any like, because with chunky glitter, it'll kind of stand up on its own. So I'm just getting all the excess glitter off the edges too. And I'm flattening it down so that it doesn't make it difficult to seal later. So now I'm taking my E6000 um, spray sealer glue thing. It'll dry clear. It doesn't look like it'll be clear, but it'll dry clear. Also, don't spray it before you pour your glitter back in your jar like me. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, I probably just adhered half of my glitter to the paper. <laughs> so now I'm just, like, folding the paper up and pouring the glitter back in the jar. I think I spill it, honestly. Oh, wait. No, I didn't spill it. <laughs> so now I'm taking some Bright Tone to seal the glitter. I am now using a different method because it's quicker. But I put... I have Bright Tone in like a little squeezy bottle I got from Dollar Tree. Bright Tone, I don't know if you can get it anywhere other than the Bright Tone website, but I use Bright Tone as an, uh, um, an alternative to epoxy and resin because it's non-toxic and safe to work with without gloves. Um, so I'm just taking that Bright Tone and evenly spreading it over the glitter. Oh, and by the way, I didn't say this, but um, after you Mod Podge, you wait 30 minutes and then after you spray with these 6,000, it says 30 minutes, but I wait an hour just in case. Um, so yeah, wait 30 minutes after the Mod Podge, an hour after the E6000 spray, and then you can put your Bright Tone on. When I seal my keychains with Bright Tone, I usually have to do three layers to get a smooth surface, and make sure you wait three hours between each layer of Bright Tone. The person who ordered this wanted you've got some fangs in some red uh, vinyl on the keychain, so I went ahead and designed that in Cricut Design Space, and I used a holographic red to orange shift vinyl. Um, and I have some transfer tape on there to apply the vinyl to the keychain. Um, I, I do have a video where I go over like what I do in design space or I have one coming up. Um, so stay tuned for that. But a lot, I know a lot of people who do DIYs are very familiar with how to make this sort of design. I actually do my fonts on like, if I'm going to do words, I literally just go on Canva cause I pay the premium for Canva and type out whatever words I want because I've found that the words on Canva weed so much easier than the words in Cricut's design space. I don't know why. So now I'm taking my Cricut tool that um, basically works like a credit card. I'm just making sure the words um, adhere to the glitter keychain. And again, it's very important that you do however many layers of bright tone you need to make sure your surface is smooth so that your vinyl can easily adhere. So now I am putting my transfer tape back on its square because honestly I reuse the crap out of my transfer tape. Um, I think a lot of people do, but I know some people don't. I honestly will reuse it until it's not sticky anymore. So that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> so now this is what it looks like with the vinyl and the glitter. I just, oh my god, these glitters I got from Amazon. I'm obsessed with them. The jars are tiny, but they're so pretty. Um, yeah, I just, I'm obsessed. I'll have the glitter set linked in the bio and um, the vinyl as well um, as the Mod Podge, the 6000 yada, yada, yada. Like, all that's, all my materials will be in there. But, yes. 
So now I'm just getting out all my tools I need to like attach my charms. I use some like regular just tiny pliers I got from Amazon and then this Cricut like pliery like tool I like to use it just to stabilize um, what I'm holding and you'll see me do it later. And then I have the keychain and um, jump, what are they called? Jump somethings <laughs> to attach it and then the mini Funko Pop they chose. They chose Vampire Teddy. And these are called eye hooks, um, and that is what I'm basically going to impale Teddy's head with <laughs> in order to make him a keychain. Okay, so some people just use the eye hooks. I don't. I find it so much easier to just take my Cricut weaning tool and, like, stab the top of their heads. I know that sounds so morbid, but, <laughs> but like, it's so much stronger. Like, some people will just shove the eye hook in there, and I just can't, especially with my nails. Um, so I'm just kind of twisting it around to make sure the... Um, the hole is like wide enough for the eye hooks to be able to get in there and catch and you know do what they need to do. So since the eye hooks are so tiny I take those little cricket the little cricket tool that I that looks kind of like pliers and I find the hole that I made and I just twist it in. This is probably the smoothest it's ever gone for me which is perfect since I'm filming a video like usually it's like trial and error trying to get that eye hook to go in at first but um yeah you just gotta stick it in the hole and twist it. It's it is what it is. <laughs> so now I'm getting the keychain, like the actual chain, and the jump ring. That's what it's called. I don't know why I forgot it in the beginning, but it's the jump ring. And this is going to basically be what I use to attach the acrylic blank and Teddy and all the tassel and, you know, all the fun stuff. This is how we get it all put together. So sometimes I'm able to pull the jump ring apart with my fingers. This was one of those times. Sometimes you need the pliers. It really just depends. This part is where it gets unique because it really just depends on the charm you're working with. If it's adorable, if it's a mini Funko, you know, whatever it may be. You just really got to find a way that works with grabbing it and then connecting it all. Because really, first you got to get the jump ring, the chain, the keychain, and Teddy all connected so you can close the jump ring. So sometimes I'll use the little Cricut tweezery thing. Sometimes I won't. It really just depends. Um, so you're going to see me kind of like trying different ways to get them all like situated. So at this point I decided it was easiest to get the jump ring and the keychain on the actual acrylic blank first and then use another jump ring for Vampire Teddy because he's just, he's heavy so it was really hard to manipulate the chain the right way. So now I'm trying to take another jump ring uh, that I've attached to Vampire Teddy and then attach it to the keychain. Like I said, it's really a lot of trial and error and just like maneuvering things because you also, you know, want your charm to be facing the right way. And see, he'll fall and I'll pick him up. Like, honestly, this is probably the most frustrating part of the process for me because sometimes it goes really easily and sometimes it just doesn't. Like, this was one of those scenarios where, like, getting the eye hook in was so smooth and then, like, getting the jump rings connected was, like just stressful like it was just like his head is so big so it was kind of like hard to work with at some points so off camera I put the tassel on the key ring just like you would normally put something on a key ring and voila he is complete um I love how this one turned out this is probably one of my favorite orders the colors are just everything I thought the red tassel would great go right with the red vinyl um if you liked it please let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you next time keep moving forward bye <laughs>